In Alias 2025, we further improved the user experience and added several new helpful changes, which can improve your process or simplify and speed up your workflow. For modeling an alias, we implemented a bunch of new tools, which will help you increasing your productivity and quality. For example, we added a new bridge fillet tool. This lets you build a circular fillet with a set of three surfaces, using the third surface as a controlling limit surface. Here you can see that the fillet is always touching the third limiting surface. Or we added a new gap checker tool, where you can check the gaps along a chain of different surfaces. You also can adjust the tool's area. Additionally, we improved the corner blend tool. Now you can use at the fourth edge a freeform blend curve instead of only a curve fillet. This gives you much more freedom in designing the right highlight on this area. And we also worked on some dynamo improvements. For example, the new mannequin has an updated geometry. And you can adjust the mannequin's position using other geometry. Like here, where I'm using a point to control the mannequin's pose. There is also a new mirror script that lets you use a custom object to use as a mirror plane, which is very helpful if you cannot use the standard planes. And many more. For improving the user experience, we did the following changes. When working with shaders, we implemented now a new delete unused shader icon. And you can now filter between all, picked and unused using the new quick access icons. This can save you many mouse clicks and travels during your daily work. And when creating some quick markups for your team, you can now use the new predictive stroke feature, which will even out the drawings and creates a much nicer look and feel of the strokes when using a mouse. And if you need to do a screenshot of your markup, just use the new copy window to clipboard icon and you can paste it in wherever you need. Additionally, I'm very excited to show you that we implemented a brand new UI element. We call it the custom puck. This is a radial menu that provides a completely new way to access frequently used tools, editors, menu items and navigation at the same time. When you press the default hotkey C, the puck appears and offers a quick access to different shelves directly at the mouse position. This means that I can hide all other shelves and UI elements like the palette and increase my working area or work directly in full screen mode. This can also be very helpful if you have a small screen, for example when working on a laptop. But that's not all. The puck also has a second ring with often used functions like the hardware and diagnostic shading, visibility controls and also pick options. And additionally, you can access the navigation options here as well. Just press the hotkey and tumble, zoom and rotate the camera with the three mouse buttons. This gives you a completely new user experience, which might also be easier to learn for new users. And the best is that you can fully customize the puck menu for yourself. So you can add and organize your tools that you need for your specific workflows. And you can also change the puck hotkey here in the preferences to any other key that you might feel comfortable with. Here you can also enable the marking menu access within the puck menu. And we also added a hotkey that permanently shows the puck. This can be changed in the hotkey editor and is set to B by default. This means the new puck menu can provide a better and faster way for new users and experts to access tools they need in a much easier and faster way. This can massively speed up your workflow by reducing mouse clicks and mouse travels and make accessibility so much easier and faster as the puck provides you a set of both tools and navigation at the same time. We also added multiple new import and export updates which helps in your cross-platform workflows. We added for example now the replace shader by name option for Katia v5 and FBX imports. This works the same way as it works on alias wire files and will replace imported shaders with shaders in your scene. And additionally, I'm very excited to announce that we implemented the import and export of the well-known format from Pixar called USD. This will improve your cross-platform workflows when you need to exchange data with other tools in the pipeline and work in a team on one project. For more information about the USD format, please visit the alias documentation. Thanks for watching the video.